Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Shield.com. Beaming around the globe Beaming. from the Sugar Shack Studios outside Houston, Texas, USA, it's the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Just ahead from the Piston Foundation, CEO Jeff Mason. Plus, we'll have an in-depth review of the 2024 Toyota Tundra Capstone Edition. That's the top of the heap of the Toyota truck line. Cool. Howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this Saturday. And uh, we are also welcoming into the show the CEO of the Piston Foundation. And his name is Jeff Mason. Jeff, good morning to you. Good morning, fellas. How are you? Well, we're doing great. Thanks for joining us this morning. Did we get you out of bed to do this? It is a little early in, in my time zone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's, what time zone are you located in? I am in mountain time. I am in uh, Denver, Colorado. Oh, yeah. Oh, not bad. I, I know somebody so that lives there. It's like 8 o'clock? Uh, it's an it hour. Exactly yeah. 8.01. 8.01. Okay. Well, right. Jeff, we're just getting in from last night, so. Yeah. So there you <laughs> now, go. As you can well imagine. Uh, I love the talk of the cars and coffees that are happening around the country because here it's a little too cold for that stuff. Yeah, is it uh, snowing yeah. up there? Uh, it did last night, so we we are living in a beautiful white landscape. Today. I got you. It's, well, my daughter lives there, and uh, I, I talked to her a couple of days ago, and uh, she loves living in Denver. And uh, hey, more power to her. Mm-hmm. She's got a great yeah. job. It, it looks good from great. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks great from here. There's no doubt about that. So, Jeff, uh, tell us what the Piston Foundation is. <laughs> So Piston Foundation is a public charity that focuses on helping young people start careers as classic car technicians. That's unique. Is there anybody else that does that sort of thing? <laughs> well, there's a few organizations that focus on um, sort of the, the technician side of, uh, of workforce development, like Tech Force. Yep. Although um, we focus specifically on classic cars, classic car restoration. Um, we look at that um, skill set that that exists inside that industry and the craftspeople uh, that we all know who have taken care of our classic cars. And, you know, we know that that workforce is graying. We know that there hasn't been a lot of youth coming in. I resemble um, that remark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm getting close myself. And uh so we're, there's and there's there's a couple of issues that have that are the source of that problem, and uh, we're working to solve those. What are those issues? Well, it's a couple of things, and mostly it's about access and awareness. So young kids, uh, teens who may be really into cars, when they look forward and think, "Is this an interest I could turn into a career?" They really don't see a path there, and so that that prevents a lot of a lot of young people thinking about that as a as a career path. The next piece is education. Technical education is expensive, so our scholarships are focused on addressing that issue. And then that next jump to hands-on training, getting a job as as a, a starting technician, that's very difficult still. And 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 technicians without education, w- with education but without experience, have a hard time landing that job. So our apprenticeship program is focused on solving that issue. Well, Jeff, you um, know, I think that uh, uh, part of the problem also is the <laughs> fact that you know these kids, their their parents, the dads. Uh, the the wives the, the the mothers all of them they are they well my oldest daughter turns 40 this year okay well i exposed her to my hobby cars mm-hmm. but she doesn't know anything about restoring cars and it's yep. it's a unique field and there aren't is not a garage on every corner like a repair shop i mean a restoration right. can take years uh, to perform and a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So where do you find a shop to actually get these kids in, get them trained, so now they could go out and open their own shop or really take over the shop that somebody older like yeah. you and I have? So it, there's a complicated bunch of factors going on there. There is, and um, <clears throat> it's also you know when we look at classic cars, there's service and maintenance of these cars, what keeps them on the road on a daily basis. So we're not always talking about frame off regist- rest- restoration type of work. I mean, it's it's everything around that, 
and including a lot of vintage racing because vintage racing is coming out of those same shops and uh there's about three thousand shops across the u.s that sort of operate in that classic car world and then there's custom shops there's also you know small manufacturers uh people like singer who are all tapping into that same uh craft skill set uh of machining metalwork paint and body interior uh mechanics engine building and that's the that's the body of skills that is at risk of of being lost and there's a lot of young people that are interested in those things and we're trying to give them a path to get into it so because just, back in my day i didn't have that I, and had i had that i mean i went to work for a chevrolet dealership well i mean you know we're talking about wash the car yeah we all did that yeah, yeah. And, Buff yeah. the paint yeah. off but we're paint. talking about a level that's obviously and clearly a level above that uh and, and can be very different mm-hmm. yep yep and it doesn't you know everybody starts somewhere just like starting at the dealership right yep. and and what but what's happening right now is uh, young people with an interest can't find their way down that path to, to build a career. And so we're trying to connect the dots with our scholarship and apprenticeship program to make sure that that, that path is there for them. Jeff, how did you get involved in this? I am a vintage rally racer myself, and so kind of a longtime car guy. And, um, you know, being in rally... Uh, you clearly understand the value of your technician when you're when you're putting your uh, yourself at risk on a on a rally course, and so um, through that uh, uh, re- those relationships, I got connected with uh, with Robert Minnick, who founded the Piston Foundation, and um, I am also a tech school graduate myself, hmm. so felt a lot of affinity for these young people um, who want to take this path and. Uh, so it's kind of a mashup of my interest in uh, technical education, my interest in cars, um, and uh, my business experience as an entrepreneur. So I felt like I could uh, get this get this project off the ground and, and change some lives. Jeff, my question to you, uh, you uh, in relation to the NASCAR experience, that's a big heavyweight mm-hmm. name that you got there in the title. How does yeah. that relate to it? And you've got an auction coming up? <laughs> Sure, and that comes out of some friends uh, in the vintage racing world, and uh, we made a connection with uh, the broadcast team at uh, uh, Fox Sports, uh, their NASCAR broadcast team, and uh, worked with them to sort of pull that that together. Um, and it's a very unique experience that uh, uh, gives a, a, a the winner a chance to not only be at a race weekend, but also meet the broadcast team. Uh, Mike Joy, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer get uh, tours of the garages, get to see the Fox TV compound, all of the broadcasting uh, compound that uh, they use to actually, you know, broadcast a, a Fox TV actual race, uh, yeah. NASCAR race. Well, you know, is- and after you really after cool. you give that away, you could also give a, have another giveaway with the in real time yeah. car talk show. I mean, who wouldn't right. want to be on this car talk show? I think that's a great idea. Let's, let's <laughs> and, and you know, you, you mentioned three three key people. You got the Kevin Harvick, you got your Clint Boyer, and, and Mike Joy. I watched some of their broadcasts leading up to Daytona for tomorrow, and I think that's a good trio for uh, that program for announcing. I think that's going to be a wonderful asset this year going into that. So, uh, kudos yeah. to, to NASCAR and kudos to Fox Sports for that as well. So, how does the charity work? How do, how does Mike go buy a car? <laughs> Uh, you're talking about the, the auction? How's yes. the auction work? Yes. Yeah, okay. So it's up on Bring a Trailer. Uh, Bring a Trailer is a partner of the Piston Foundation, and uh, they support us uh, with their platform and charity auctions on their platform. And uh, so it is live on Bring a Trailer right now. You can jump up there and bid on this experience. The auction ends at uh, 10, 10.30 Pacific on Monday hmm. morning. And, okay. and what are you auctioning? So it is uh, tickets for up to four people for this NASCAR race weekend experience that includes qualifying the Sunday race, uh, as well as pit passes and uh, a tour of the Fox TV compound, uh, introduction to the pit reporters, uh, a chance to see how they do all the in-car camera work, 
that uh, Fox Sports uh, does, um, as well as a chance to meet uh, Clint and Kevin and Mike Joy in the broadcast booth during qualifying on Saturday. How exciting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. yeah exactly. Um, well, uh, what, a, what a great experience for uh, especially a race fan. And now yeah. uh, all the, the money that is being bid, I assume, is going to go to the foundation and, and scholarships and, and money well spent, I'll say. Yeah, all the money from the sale will go directly into our scholarship and apprenticeship program. So that will then show up. In, in young people who are uh, you know, able to uh, afford a, a tech school education or uh, a young apprentice that gets a start being placed in the shop. Um, that's, so that money comes back into the community. And that's, that's really the power of the Piston Foundation. We're looking to um, use the giving power of the car community because we're all very, very generous people um, and create a way to bring bring some of that giving back into the car community to serve the grassroots needs that we see need to be met. Are you still racing? I am. What what cool. do, what do you what do you race? So our primary race that my brother and I do is the Carrera Panamericana in Mexico yeah. and there we race a 65 Volvo Amazon 122S. That is a uh, that's a real specific, you know, Carrera prepped car. We've raced that uh, three times and had some good success there. Hmm. And, and do you um, wrench on the car yourself? We do a bit, but most of it at that level um, is done by a shop up in Stratford, Connecticut called Vintage Racing Services. On the road, we take care of some things, but um, we do have a, a crew that supports us. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> next time you're uh, trailering through Houston, Texas on your way to Mexico, pick me up and I'll, 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 hit, your, I'll, I'll hit your ride. Are you sure you want to do that? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he knows where all the cantinas are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe yeah. You can join us this summer. This summer we're racing the uh, the Mille Miglia in Italy. Oh. Uh, okay. And we, so I guess and that, I guess all I need is a ticket uh, on an airplane. There's a song so. in that, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think there is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but that'll be a very different car. That one is a 30, we'll race a 39 Fiat 508C called a Balila. Oh, and uh, so that'll be a new experience for us as as uh, rally racing. Now, how did you get into the, this antique racing? Well, vintage, stuff? yeah, vintage, vintage, antique, whatever you want to call it. Because listen, yeah. there are some cars that I have seen on the track. I'm going, oh my gosh, don't anybody hit that car? Yeah. Or is it going <laughs> fast enough? <laughs> yeah, is it going fast yeah. enough? That there's another thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a niche for sure, but we love it. Um, my brother called me one day. Uh, years ago and said hey i've got this idea to race this race down in mexico would you be my co-driver and i i you know i i, I looked at it for a moment i said yeah sure it looks like a great adventure let's do it and that was the start and uh we've been at it ever since how many years ago was that that was five years ago oh. and uh we've raced the carrera three times we've done some other regular some reg regularity rallies and um that's how we got ourselves to the Mille this coming year. So, so are you taking a car to Italy? Or there's a car that over one, there? No, car? that one we're going to rent. This is the first <laughs> time we've raced the Mille, so we're going to rent that car from a great outfit up in Brescia and uh, race it, see how we like it, see how we do, and uh, and then... Man. what? But yeah. wait a minute. Wait. wait I got, time I, out. What, I'm going there, what, too. What if you wreck the car? pit crew. Yep, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer <laughs> that's a good answer you don't get your deposit we, back how's that <laughs> we have a mantra in our race team which is keep it on the road and don't get lost yeah so if we live by our our ethos we will uh we will, we will be <laughs> so what's it cost to rent a car like that i mean um it's not inexpensive although for a once in a lifetime opportunity to race the mille Emilia, it's uh it's pretty reasonable I mean, all racing is expensive. Anybody, any, everybody will tell you that. Sure. So yes, we know uh, that. But it's it's pretty it's pretty affordable. We raced in November at a USA Mille Miglia warm up. It is run by the same organization, and um, we were lucky enough to win our class there, and that gave us a guaranteed entry into the U into the Italian Mille. Hmm. And that was our 
that was our door in. I don't think we would have could have gotten there any other way. But you, um, you know, so just just real quick. So if if Don decides he wants to go over there, does he have to have a special license, special qualification, or is he can he just go over there and rent deep the car? Pocket, deep pockets, Mike. Besides deep pockets, deep pockets. Yeah. it's really driven by the car. The Mille only uh, accepts certain certain years of car. It's uh, twenty. Three to fifty nine, and um, so it's got to be a specific car in a specific year, and you you know you uh, make your entry, and they either accept you or they don't. So you might have the right car in the right year, but they may not accept you. So it's uh, so it's not a, necessarily a special. You got to have license, experiences, and all that stuff. No. If you're silly enough to get in there, and you got the money, they'll and they'll accept you. You're after it, right? Exactly. Exactly. He never did yep. say how much. Is it above ten grand or below ten grand to rent one of these? Above. Ah, okay. Well above. Yeah. Okay. Well above. I was trying to put him on a spot. Uh, you know, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know specifically, but um, I have a good idea, and so I'll speak on your behalf. You're way too low. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a once in a lifetime thing. That's like it. That's what he said. It is. It. it is a once in a lifetime thing. And so it's one of it's one of those kind of things that you don't want to tell the missus, honey. I'm going to go to Europe. I got a business trip. And you're over staying there home. I'm go, I got to go for a race. That's, that's all you got to. Don't right. have to say where. And, and, meatballs and, and spaghetti. And, and, and not it's the be fact great. that you're going to participate in the race. <laughs> Lots of pizza. Yeah, I'm going to wrench on a couple of cars. Well, okay. What does that entail? Well, not much, but. Yeah. Yeah. I'll that. be back. Between Don't worry. Wrenching, I'm racing. Yeah, that's right. that's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, is there any difference, really? All right. So yeah. tell me the, the so the auction is underway now, and it closes on Monday. Closes on Monday, ten thirty a.m. Pacific. Pacific. Yep. And yep. so uh, we had it up on our screen for a few minutes so people could see it yep. and get an idea of what they're looking at when they go there. And I guess you could uh, all you had to do is go online to uh, bringatrailer.com, and I'm sure that there's a link on there yes. to get you where you need to go. It's under yep. charity auctions. Look in their charity auctions section. And one of the great things about our partnership with Bring a Trailer is uh, not only does the, the proceeds of the auction itself go to our, our scholarship fund, but also... Bring a Trailer donates the uh, buyer's fee from the auction to the Piston Foundation for our scholarship and apprenticeship program. So be Bring a Trailer really is uh, a great partner supporting the car community. Well, I have cool. to tell you that it is a real pleasure to talk to you, sir. And uh, we wish you the best of luck, and I hope that you'll stay in touch with us. Uh, if nothing else, we get you out of bed on a Saturday morning, and, and we can rib you and tease you and poke at you and, and, <laughs> sure. and get some great information. Now, from get out there and shovel the snow. Maybe we can package that up and auction it so somebody else can enjoy the teasing. There you go. There, there you go. And next time you're in Houston, look us up, will you? Definitely. Thanks, fellas. Thank, Thank you. you. Jeff Mason, CEO of the Piston Foundation. Very cool. I want to remind everybody that the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream our three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. And podcasts are available from your favorite podcast provider. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through ProAm.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission. 
the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Hey, thanks for joining us on this uh, Saturday where our live broadcast uh, is blasted around the globe. Happening. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. And uh, I didn't want to remind everybody that the 28th Annual Keels and Wheels Car and In the Water Boat Show returns to the Lakewood Yacht Club in Seabrook May 4th and 5th this year featuring 60 cars of the Ford Mustang and Donzi boats and a special display of resto mods. Learn more at keels Wheels. Dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, next weekend, we are going to be broadcasting live from the Hemi Hideout at a special time. Yes. Uh, we're going to forego the 8 o'clock start time and push it back to 10. When the doors open at 1030, we'll be there with all the people and we get some more interviews and that sort of thing. Yep. So, uh, And if you want, if you're interested in coming on out to join us uh, along with all the Corvette people, go to HemiHideout.com and uh, learn more about the event for next weekend. Mm-hmm. All right. Time now for the events calendar. Is it the events or cruise in? Events. What do you do? Events it is. All right. Speaking of next weekend, February 23 through 25 is the Lone Star Throwdown up in Conroe at the fairgrounds up mm-hmm. there. Big event. It is sold out for uh, entries, cars, and trucks that are going to be there as well as vendors. So uh, it's going to be a, it's always a big event. Go to LoneStarThrowdown.com for more information. Also, February the 24th, and I like the name, 2024 Cardi Gras. Cardi Gras? Cardi Gras? Yeah. Cardi Gras. Cardi Gras. Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess you pronounce it Illinois, too, don't you? <laughs> uh, could be. 1721 Spring <laughs> Green really Boulevard does. at the Social Bar and Grill in Katy, Texas. March 16th, looking a little further out. Corvette Chevy Expo down at Galveston Island Convention Center. Go to uh, CorvetteChevyExpo.com for more information on that. April 25 through 28, the big one we're looking forward to, really big here. Hot Rod Tour of Texas Ooh, yeah. kicks off with live music oh, in yeah. Victoria. Three days of cruising across Texas. There is a 350 car limit. They have a few tickets that are still available to register your car if you want to join. Big parade. Mm-hmm. Leaves Friday morning, uh, heads, leaves Victoria, goes all the way across to New Braunfels for the night at drive in. Saturday, end up in Fredericksburg for the night. And then Sunday, there is even more to come. Nice job, Quibido. I think it's Thibodeau, isn't it? Quibido, Thibodeau Thibodeau. or Quibido depends on which one. They're cousins. It's Illinois. <laughs> There's too much noise in here. <laughs> Remind me to tell you my 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 best Thibodeau joke. I can joke. only imagine what that off would the be. air. All right, let's uh, move on, shall we? And talk about a review of the 2024 Toyota Tundra Capstone. Now I will say that I've seen a couple of these out in the wild before. I actually got one and got the opportunity to drive it. And uh, I was really impressed with some of the styling changes. So this is the 2024 Toyota Tundra Capstone Crew Max four-wheel drive. Uh, They did a big redo in 2022, and they've been styling it out since then. It is available in two cab styles, two engines, got three different bed links. So you can kind of mix and match things, but there's actually seven trim levels, Hmm. starting with the base SR, then it goes to the SR5, a limited, platinum, 1794, and then you got the TRD Pro, which is the big off-road. And then you get to the Capstone, which is the top-of-the-line premium model, which is what we happen to have for our review. Now, it's got a lot of things on the outside of it, uh, including LED lighting that's all the way around, including fog lights. It's got the automatic leveling headlights. And uh, it's got tow mirrors that actually extend out from the sides and fold that are heated. It's got a panoramic sunroof, and it's really a big sunroof on the inside of that cab. Got power running boards, and it's got a bed step that's on the back so you can get up into the bed. My wife really appreciated these power running boards because they were a pretty good height for her, and they came Mm. out quick. They didn't didn't diddle around trying to get there. We were rolling on some 22-inch dark chrome alloy wheels, which really stood out well on, on the white paint that we were riding in. It's got... On the inside of it, it's got the aniline leather seating surfaces. Now, the front seats are heated and ventilated, as well as the rear seats on the outboard positions. It's uh, got a 14-inch Toyota multimedia screen in it, and that's where you're going to find your CarPlay, your Android, all of your uh, navigation, your convenience controls. It's all going to be right in there. Now, for the driver, 
There is a 12.3 inch digital gauge package and it's got a big 10 inch heads up display right there on the glass. So it's really big, really easy to see, particularly wow. at night. It was really nice running down the road. Now, if you want to really have some sound in this thing, it's got a JBL 12 speaker audio system with a subwoofer on it. And it really sounds well in this vehicle because it's got a lot of the the sound deadening glass and stuff on it. It's got a big glass space. You got big plenty of windshield, plenty the big glass on the back of it. So there's not a lot of road noise. So that audio system really stands out. Now to make all this stuff work, up front you got a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 hybrid under the hood. Now hmm. this equates out to 437 horsepower, Dang. 583 yeah. pound feet of torque, and it's got a nice sound to it. I thought first time I cranked it, I thought it had a V8 in it. So it's got a really cool sound to it. It's got plenty of torque. It's a 10 speed automatic with this thing. Now the one we had was rated to tow 11,200 pounds. Uh, you can do a couple of mods, get it up to 12,000. Haul rating of 1,940, so plenty of stuff to put in the bed. Now, the EPA says that in the city you should get 19, the highway 22, combined 20. It's always been kind of the, the shortfall of the tundra. The fuel economy has always been a little weak. Yeah, like 13. Yeah. So I drove 228 miles in this vehicle, and I got 16.0 on the average across it, okay. which is better than I got in the past. But still, yeah, but you don't really buy vehicles like this if you're looking for gas mileage. You're going to buy something else to begin with. Uh, Toyota says 0 to 60 in 6.6 6 seconds. It's got two different drive modes. You can get the tow, the tow mode, the haul mode. And, and I will say I thought it had great highway dynamics. The ride was nice and smooth. It was firm without being wishy-washy. There was not a lot of road noise. It handled nice. And the, again, the V6 engine really had a nice sound to it. I was really impressed with it. And the big glass, the big windshield, the glass on the side, it just had a nice big view to where you could see everything. It was really a pleasure to drive the vehicle. Now, I will say, pricing-wise, that Crew Max that we were in, the, the base model price starts at $42,015. Now, the base trim price that we were at, again, seven levels up, starts at $78,845. The capstone. The yeah. capstone. Top of the line. As tested, here we go. Eighty-two thousand four hundred twenty-three dollars, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. which which was a little. It was actually less than I expected it to be. I was waiting about for you to say a hundred thousand. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Now, if you look across at the Ford F one hundred and fifty, the base on it for the again the big crew cab is forty-three thousand five hundred and fifteen. The Silverado forty-two five thousand five hundred, and the Ram fifteen hundreds at forty-two one seventy. So they're all on the base level, all in that forty-two thousand range for the. Standard half ton four door pickup truck, and then you kind of go up from there with whatever you want. All all of them have plenty of stuff to put in it to where you can push it up in that eighty or ninety thousand dollar range and get whatever you want. But I I do like the restyling they've done on this truck. It looks nice. We've always liked to drive the Tundra. It was just the fuel economy and some of the styling keys on it. But they've really made some changes in. You know, for Jason's the got a Tundra. I don't know what year's his, his year his is, but uh, he likes his. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook. Back in just a couple of mementos. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggieland? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? 
Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tint, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.